Missouri schools may have to alert parents when evolution is taught. And this bill would allow and encourage parents to take their children out of school for what would implicitly be approved absences in order to protect them from being exposed to forbidden knowledge. <laughs>
In one way or other, I have seen many times an admission to the effect that whether we believe it matters more than whether it is true. Their position, and I'm, I'm not kidding about this, their position is not about truth. It's about appearances. And it's not demonstrated by fact, but by a demonstration of conviction. And really, it's about make-believe. It doesn't matter whether it's true or not. There's an emotional attachment to religious beliefs. That's why they uh, require apologists, people whose job it is to make up whatever excuse is necessary to rationalize or justify whatever they need in order to preserve a preferred belief. Uh, and even when that belief is obviously wrong, a religious apologist has a doctrinal obligation to defend the faith and make people believe. And that includes pulling the wool over your own eyes, too. You're supposed to reaffirm your faith using a cognitive bias and a logical fallacy of a circular argument routing back to an assumed conclusion. And why would anybody be so determined to preserve or promote a belief rather than investigating it to make sure that it's correct. I've often met people who say that they don't care what the facts are. They're going to believe what they want to believe. And if I try to tell them what the facts are, then they get angry, saying, why can't I believe what I want to believe? As if it was a matter of choice. And they tell me that I have that choice too, but I don't. Whatever I believe is a condition determined by my knowledge of the facts and will obligately change along with my understanding of the information. I have no choice in the matter, and if I did, I wouldn't believe as I do. I wouldn't believe as they do either, because if I have to believe in a fantasy world, I can imagine much better ones than they have. <laughs> what do these nine organizations have in common? They all have the word family in their names. They're all overtly Christian organizations, all vehemently anti-gay, and they are all on the nation's official list of organized hate groups. To the best of my understanding, bigotry, intolerance, and hatred are not values. And, uh, but then faith isn't a virtue either. And while we're at it, intelligent design is not a theory, creation is not science, abstinence only is not sex education, and the Bible is not the word of God. I saw a poster recently that said that Obama is not a brown skin anti-war socialist giving away free health care. You're talking about Jesus. <laughs> I also read an article written by a Christian that was complaining about how far the religious right have ventured away from the original practice of Christianity back when they were pacifists renouncing worldly goods to help the poor. And for the same reason, I think it's funny when any Christian organization pretends to be about family values because Jesus did not value families. Jesus said, do not think that I've come to bring peace on earth. I came not to bring peace, but a sword. For I came to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. He who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves mother or father more than me is not worthy of me. He also said that whoever comes to me and does not hate his mother and his father and his sisters and his brothers and his children and his wife and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. So maybe it's not surprising that all these Christian organizations with the word family in their name are really hate groups. I know some Fox News followers who imagine that allowing for gay rights will somehow cost them religious liberty. So I asked a few of them face to face, what difference does it make to you if a gay couple gets married? How does that infringe your rights in any way at all or impact you at all? And the answer was, in essence, that gay marriage is a threat to the free expression of religion because Christians feel oppressed when they're not allowed to oppress other people. They said, let them have civil unions, just don't call it a marriage. Well, why not? Why not call it a marriage? Because the National Organization for Marriage says that marriage is a union of one man and one woman, and it has been this throughout the history of civilization. It will remain this, no matter what unelected judges say. 
Except that's not true, because in ancient times, and in many places still today, a man can have more than one wife. And the difference between areas where polygamy is legal and here in the West where it is not is that our women have rights. Uh, keeping multiple women happy all at the same time in one relationship is like riding a bicycle on one wheel. It's a great stunt and it looks cool, but it's hard to maintain that balance in the long run. I don't believe in marriage myself. It's an arbitrary human concept with no reality beyond that. Uh, it isn't always necessarily romantic. It is often political. Even if you believe in God and swear to love one another for better or worse till death do you part, none of that is assured. In fact, evangelicals are statistically more likely to get divorced than people with no religion. In fact, there's a Christian couple in Australia who are threatening to get divorced if gay marriage is legalized. It doesn't matter to them that Jesus forbade divorce except on the grounds of fornication and that Jesus forbade divorcees from remarrying because that would be adultery. In fact, Mark 10, uh, verses 2 through 12, Luke 16, 18, and 1 Corinthians 7, 10 through 15 all prohibit divorce for any reason. Somehow that doesn't matter to this couple. Nor that fornication and adultery are stoning offenses, just like rape. In each case, both the man and the woman are to be put to death, because God is an intolerant bastard. I mean, a righteous judge. You all know who this girl is? Look at this child. Is this the face of a demon? Or is this the look of a skeptic who's not buying your bullshit? The problem is, it's the same glare either way. And that's why we're lumped in together. This is the way we look when we realize we're being lied to. When you realize that all of the fables in the Bible began, as, began in the hearts of superstitious primitives who just made it up. It's man-made mythology, and there is no truth in it. There's no heaven, no hell, no Eden either, and there is no devil. He was invented by Persians, adapted by Jews, and embellished by Christians. He was never the serpent, nor a fallen angel, and he can't steal your soul because we don't have souls. Exorcism isn't real because demons aren't real, because magic isn't real. We are not cursed. We are not fallen. We have arisen and we don't need salvation because God literally doesn't give a damn what happens after you die. Because then, neither of you exist. There is no goddamn devil because there is no God. Damn! You just die and that's it. You're not immortal. You're not eternal. And to believe otherwise is to diminish everything that you really have. Life is precious because it is short and there's nothing after it. There's no destiny, and there's no purpose beyond what you give it yourself. If you want your life to mean something, try making someone else's life meaningful. Because... Thank you. Because regardless, whatever else you believe, history will be our judge. And stop waiting and wondering about some posthumous promise or divine damnation and learn to live and love life. Standards that were approved by the National Science Teachers Association count as indoctrination because they mandate that they teach only one side. And I so wish that I could address people like this to say that given the history and diversity of life on Earth, there is only one side. Evolution is an inescapable fact of population genetics. Intelligent design was disputed 
by science and refuted in a court of law. It is creationism, a form of, of religious extremism, a denial of reality dedicated to legendary fables that are literally. Missouri schools may have to alert parents when evolution is taught. Now, this bill would allow and encourage parents to take their children out of school for what would implicitly be approved absences in order to protect them from being exposed to forbidden knowledge. <laughs>